In this video, we'll walk through how to build a conversion focused WordPress website starting from zero. And before I go into WordPress and start building pages and stuff, let me just quickly define what I mean by conversion focus, because this is the differentiating factor here. This is what makes this tutorial different. You see, most websites and most website building tutorials, most themes and, and WordPress plugins and so on are basically concerned with making a website that looks nice. But a website that looks nice, that's really secondary. Of course, we want our website to look nice, but the real job of our website is to convert visitors. So the website serves some kind of a business goal. Maybe you want to build a mailing list of subscribers. Maybe you want to get customers for your product, members for your membership site, coaching clients, whatever it is. The website has some kind of a goal, some kind of a conversion goal that a good website does a good job of moving people towards that conversion goal. And most websites, quite frankly, do a terrible job of doing this. So in this tutorial, we're not just talking about how to make a website, period. And we're not talking about how to make a website that looks nice. We're talking about primarily how to make a website that actually serves your business. And we will pass four different conversion checkpoints. These are like the main checkpoints that we will pass and sometimes revisit as we go through the site. Those four points are, first of all, clarity, readability, and structure. So your website has to be clear and easy to understand. People have to be able to easily read the text on your website and understand what can they get, where can they navigate to, to get what they're looking for, and so on. That is clarity, readability, and structure. And right there, that's where most websites already fail. So we'll make sure that we have that the second point is speed optimization. Nobody likes using a slow website. So we'll take a look at how to make our website as fast as possible. The third point is calls to action. We want to have explicit calls to action throughout our pages, throughout our content that basically tell people, Hey, sign up to my newsletter or Hey, check this thing out. You know, call me to schedule a coaching call or something, right? We want to call people to take a conversion focused action. And finally, we have what we call conversion pages, where the entire page has the purpose of driving people towards a conversion goal, such as a sales page to sell your product. And we will hit on all of these points in rapid succession in this tutorial. Now let's get started with that. I am in my WordPress dashboard. And as you can see, this is basically empty. There's nothing going on here yet. And we will start with some very basics. One thing in the basic settings that I would recommend you check is go into permalinks, that's settings permalinks, I recommend using the post name permalink. So that is when your URLs will simply be yourwebsite.com forward slash post name, instead of having dates and categories and so on in there as well, or, or IDs or something like that. Those are basically the neatest, nicest looking URLs. And that is one factor that can make your website a little more user friendly. In general, good news is in WordPress, Basically, all the basic settings are good and you don't have to worry about tweaking things very much. Next, let's look at plugins. So if we go to plugins right here, you can see I've already installed the Thrive Product Manager, which we'll get back to later, but there's nothing else. And we can go on add a new and here we can add some plugins. Now, here are some recommendations. First of all, don't install too many plugins. Right? That's one of the mistakes that a lot of WordPress users make is they fall in love with the idea of, oh, I can add this thing, I can add that thing and so on. In the end, you've got 50 plugins and your site is super slow and breaks all the time. That's not a good idea. So try to keep your plugin list lean. But here are just a couple of simple recommendations. If you're going to have blog posts with comments active, I recommend this plugin right here, the Akismet anti-spam plugin. So you can install that directly from here and then also activate it from here. Another plugin I recommend is an SEO plugin of some sort. And the recommendations there are either Yoast SEO or SEO press. So if we go here and we type Yoast, for example, this will show us the search results. And this is the one plugin I recommend. And the other one is SEO press. And both of these are very, very similar but you should have one of these two plugins, which will take care of your site's SEO settings and give you a better chance of ranking in search results. And then one of the things we're going to do is we're going to build the basic structure of our website right away. So before we start fiddling with themes and pages and so on, we will build the basic structure of the website. And here's something that can help you do that. First, if you type in Faker Press, 
you'll see that there is a plugin called FakerPress and you can use this plugin to generate some dummy posts. So if you have a completely new installation with no content yet, it can be difficult to work with your theme design, with your website design, because there's no example content that you can look at to get an idea of what does a blog post look like. This here is the solution. On a brand new website, install FakerPress and generate 10 to 12 blog posts. They'll just have like dummy content on some random featured image. And you can use that to make it easier to design your website before you have any content. Another thing I recommend is if you type in privacy policy, you'll see that there are various plugins that can help you generate legal pages such as privacy policy, disclaimer page, terms of service, and so on. And one that I can recommend here is this one here. Although I'm sure I haven't tested all of them, right? probably many of them are good, but this is one that you can use to generate your basic pages that you have to have on your website, such as privacy policy disclaimer and so on. So that is another step. Install one of these plugins, generate the basic legal pages that you need on your website, and then let's go into pages. So for this, I'm going to go to pages and add new. And here we can add pages. I'm going to create a page called about, and we're just gonna give that the title about, and then I'm going to go ahead and publish this page, this empty page right away. So I just want to have that page because I know that eventually I'm going to make an about page. I'm going to fill this with content, but I want to have it already. And I'm going to continue adding some pages like that. I can make this a bit easier for myself by uh, unchecking the full screen mode here. So I get my menu back here. It makes the whole thing a bit user friendlier. So I'm going to click on add new again, and I'm going to create another page that I will call lead gen page. And in this case, what I'm going to do is let me just save the draft here and go to document permalink. I'll call this something else. I'll call this free guide. So as you can see here, this changes what the actual URL of this page will be. And I don't want that to say lead gen page. So free guide is better. And again, I'll go ahead and publish that. So I want to have a page where I simply send people to my mailing list, give them a, give them a reason to sign up to my mailing list. Then once more, let's ha hit add new again. And I'm going to call this the sales page. And same idea, I'm gonna save the draft that gives me a permalink setting here. And I wanna give this a nicer URL as well. Now, the demo site I'm gonna build here is gonna be a photography themed website. So on a photography themed website, maybe I'm selling something like a photography course or something like Lightroom presets, filters, things like that. So I'll just call this Lightroom presets and again, publish this page. Now, once we've done all that, if I go to all pages right here, you can see we have about, disclaimer, lead gen, privacy policy, sales page, and the sample page is the one that was already there in the new WordPress installation. This is a very basic structure of the website. And the other thing that I have here that you can create using FakerPress is a bunch of posts. So as you can see, I've made some photography themed posts here to match the, the demo of the site. This is what I start with. This gives me kind of the skeleton of the site that we're gonna to start to build. Now, the next step is I'm gonna be using Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect as the plugins for building the theme and for creating conversion-focused pages. Now, the next step is I'm gonna be using Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect as the plugins for building the theme and for creating conversion focused pages. And to do this, let's go into plugins and I'm gonna activate my Thrive Product Manager plugin. So at this step, you would want to log into your Thrive Themes account, download the Thrive Product Manager and install it and then activate it as I just did. When you click on Thrive Product Manager, once you've activated it, you will be asked to connect it to your Thrive Themes account and that will then automatically give you access to all of the Thrive Themes products you can access. And like I said, what we want is Thrive Architect, so I'll check this, and the Shapeshift theme, which is the first Thrive Theme Builder theme. So I'll install this and simply wait for this process to finish. And then I get this success message right here, and I click on the blue button, go to Theme Builder Dashboard. This takes me to the beginning of the Thrive Theme Builder setup process and we'll walk through this together. And on another note, you can see here in the sidebar, we have Thrive Dashboard. 
that is added once you install a Thrive Themes product. So that's how you can get back here. It's Thrive Dashboard, Thrive Theme Builder. Now, this here's the good news. This is a setup wizard that walks you through step-by-step -step everything you need to build your website. So really, you can just run through this wizard and without even me explaining anything about it, you'll end up with a pretty good website. But as we go through this, I will add some notes with the idea of conversion focus in mind. So let's get started. So I click on get started and it asks me to upload a logo for my demo site. I've already uploaded one here. You can simply upload any kind of logo image file and that will be used in the header and everywhere else on your site where the logo makes sense. So I'll click on choose and continue. The next question is, what is your main brand color? Now, don't worry about this. If you don't already have a specific brand color you want to use, you can use anything. You can keep this blue and decide later. You can always change this later. And you can also kind of just wing it. So I'll just go with, you know, some kind of an orange tone because again, it doesn't matter that much. I can always change that later. So I'll just go with this, choose and continue. And you'll see right away why it asked me about the brand color first because as we go into the setup wizard, you can see that, for example, this button is already using this orange brand color that I selected. So as we build our site, we already see our own colors applied. Now, what you can do here is basically we're going to start choosing components of the site step by step. And there's two things you can do. You can either use your keyboard keys left and right to scroll through different examples, or you can click here to load different header examples in this case, or you can click on this item here to open a whole menu of, or a gallery that you can choose from. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different headers here that we can choose from. I'm gonna go with one that's pretty simple. We'll click on that. It gives me an idea of what it actually looks like. That looks good. I'll click on choose and continue. That moves us down to the footer where the same rules apply. I can scroll through different examples of footers and see them loaded in like this, or I can click here to see a gallery. Now for my footer, I want something really simple to begin with. I don't have that many pages or anything. You know, at some later point, if I have a website with loads of pages, maybe I wanna have one like this with lots of links and things. But right now I want something very simple. For example, this here. So let's insert that choose and continue. And now we get to the homepage. And this is one of our first really important conversion checkpoints. So by default in WordPress, your homepage will simply show a list of blog posts with the latest one at the top and then going down in chronological order. And you can still have that. You can choose this option here to get that. But from a conversion standpoint, that is not a good idea because really you should think of your homepage as an important landing page on your website. And if you think about what does the homepage need to do, it should communicate what your website is about and who it's for and what to do next. And if you simply show your latest blog posts, it's very hit and miss, kind of depends on what the last thing you published is. Someone could land on your homepage and see something they're really interested in. And then there's a chance that they become, you know, they, they read your post, they learn more about you, they become a future customer. But there's also a chance that the latest few posts just don't appeal to them that much and then you've lost them forever. That's really not a good kind of roulette to play on your homepage. So instead, we should have a specific landing page as our homepage that's independent of the blog page. And that's what we're gonna do. So in Thrive Theme Builder, we can generate a homepage and it gives us the same approach right here. So I can scroll through different homepage layouts and here this, this is really handy because I can actually see directly what this homepage layout looks like with demo content right there. So we can scroll through these different options and see what we have. And as you can see, this is the kind of homepage we're talking about, right? A homepage where you can clearly communicate with text and imagery and these elements like this grid here, you can communicate what your website is about, who it's for, and give people a clear thing to do next. And also we can click here to see a whole gallery here of available pre-made layouts. And again, you can edit all of this later. So I'm gonna go with this personal branding homepage to start with. And here again, you can see that it's using my brand color, right? It's using this orange that I chose for the icons, for the text highlights and everything like that. So that's really cool. 
All right, let's stick with this for the moment and click on choose and continue. Next up, the single blog post. So here, when you write a blog post, you publish a blog post, the question is, what does that look like when someone lands on that individual blog post? And same idea, right? You get it by now. We can choose from different pre-made layouts. And I'm going to choose one of these more or less at random because we're going to get back to this. Uh, let me just choose this one maybe. And that looks good enough. Let's choose and continue. Then we come to the blog post list. So this is what does the page look like that lists all of your blog posts. And again, we can choose from different layouts right here. Now in terms of conversion focus and in terms of clarity and making your website easy to navigate, here's a simple rule you can follow. We have some layouts with, with kind of a grid layout that tend to show a lot of posts on very little space. So here, as you can see, if I scroll down a bit, I'm basically seeing nine posts all at once. And this can be great if for, for a website where I publish frequently, this kind of layout can make sense. If I only publish like once or twice a week, then most of the times if someone comes to this page, they're seeing the same thing again. So having a layout like this is probably less ideal. So for a slower publishing schedule, or also if you think about, if you, if you write loads of little news articles, then a grid layout is, is a good idea. If you write epic posts every once in a while, then a layout like this might make more sense, which kind of gives every single post a bit more weight. I'm gonna go with this, click on choose and continue. And then we finally have the page layout. So that is what does a page, not a blog post look like. And once again, same idea, we click here and we choose a layout that we like. I'm gonna keep this very simple just to have a page with content and we'll get back to that later. All right, choose and continue. And then finally, we have the question of menus. So if we have existing menus already on our site, we can choose which one is the header menu, which one is the footer menu. But in this case, we don't have menus yet. So I'm gonna continue without choosing a menu. And that concludes our run through the initial setup wizard. So right now, if we actually just go and look at the website, as you can see, this is already coming together. We have a home page where we can start editing the content. We have a blog page and we have basically all our basic templates set up. So that's a pretty good start. So right now, if we actually just go and look at the website, as you can see, this is already coming together. We have a home page where we can start editing the content. We have a blog page and we have basically all our basic templates set up. So that's a pretty good start. Now let's continue down the side here. So we've completed the basic setup wizard. We also have a branding tab right here. Where we can change a few things. We have already set a color, but you can always come back here and change that color. And that will just kind of change the color accent across your whole website. We have a logo option. And here, as you can see, and we can actually see this in our footer here, this logo here doesn't look quite right because it's on a dark background. And while this one looks fine because it's on a light background, and we actually have a function for this. So we have a dark version and a light version of the logo. So I can click on this here and I can choose a light version of the logo that's made to look good on dark backgrounds. And then that will be automatically used in places like this. So that's one of the things we can do in branding. Plus you can upload a favicon and the favicon is the little icon that you see next to the browser tab in a browser. So you can upload an image. It should be a small square image. And the most important thing is it has to be scalable. So you can upload an image that's, let's say, 200 by 200 pixels, but it should have ideally a transparent background. You could use a PNG for this. And you have to make sure that it looks good at a very small size, because again, just look at how small the icon next to a browser tab is. That's at that size, it still needs to be recognizable. So you can't have a text logo or something like that. That basically won't be readable at that size. But here is where you can upload that. Next, we have typography. And this is one of the ways in which you can change the overall look and feel of your website. Let me just quickly show you how this works. So we have this set here. We can expand this. This gives us an idea of what the typography looks like across our whole website. And I can go ahead and edit this. And editing typography works in groups. So I can click on any individual typography element and create a rule that basically says the H1 heading looks like this on my website. 
or the paragraph text, the default paragraph text looks like this on my website. But I can also edit this in groups. So if I click here, for example, you can see that there's a breadcrumb navigation that says heading one is part of all headings, this group here. And that is part of all elements, all right? So let's do all headings. And here I can change what I want this to be. So I can choose, let's say, Open Sans. And I can choose what the regular font weight is and what the bold font weight is. So maybe I want the bold to be a bit bolder and then apply that. And as you can see, this has changed all of my headings all at once. So I don't have to click through each one if I want to update this font in general. And this is how we control the fonts on our website. I'm just going to go ahead and save this change I just made and then head back here. So this is how you can change the typography across your entire website. Next, we have templates and we will get back to this in a bit. This is where you can control and edit all of the templates we've already chosen and created so far. And next, let's go into site speed. As I said, the speed of your site is a pretty significant factor for conversions because if your site is slow, people generally won't stick around. Now, speed optimization on a website is massively complicated and technical. And we have made this as easy as possible for you. So we have these three steps available. Let's just start with the first one, minification and caching. We have two caching plugins that we recommend and directly integrate with, with recommended configurations. This is going to do a lot of the technical heavy lifting to make your site faster. So the way this works is we can choose one, for example, WP Fastest Cache, install this, activate it, and then once it's installed and activated, it says configure for optimal caching with Thrive. Simply click on this, click on yes, and this will auto configure the plugin to work as perfectly as possible with Thrive Theme Builder. That's it, your whole caching, and this right here usually takes easily half an hour or longer, but it's done, your caching setup done. Next up, we have image optimization. So images on your website generally would slow down a page much more than other elements because you know a bunch of text is very small in terms of file size, but an image can easily be half a megabyte or a megabyte or even more. So how do we fix that? Again, we have two recommended solutions. One is Optimal, which is an advanced image optimization plugin for WordPress, which we recommend. It has a free plan, but for a certain amount of visitors or a certain amount of usage, you will have to pay. And it's worth paying for this. It's a really good solution. If you wanna keep your budget lower and not pay for a solution, we have Smush as the alternative. This is a free plugin that you can use completely for free. So that's the alternative. But I re recommend that you activate one of these two. I'm gonna go ahead with Optimal. And again, basically the same thing. We made it as easy as possible, right? I'm gonna install this. This will send you to the Optimal page where you can either register if you don't have an account yet, or if you already have an account, you enter your key. We can register directly inside the interface here. We'll get an email with an API key, which we enter here, and then we click on connect. And then once we've done that, we see a status update here. It starts optimizing the images on the website. And before you start fiddling with the settings here, let's go straight back to Thrive Dashboard and Thrive Theme Builder. So once we've made this connection, let's go back here and go back into site speed and image optimization. So this is where we started. And here, once again, once the plugin is actually installed and activated, you can see that there's a button that says configure for optimal use. I click that, click yes, and we're done. Okay, so again, we've done all the work for you here that's possible to do to get image optimization set up as perfectly as possible. And then finally, we have accelerated mobile pages. As I'm recording this, this is in beta. This is a way for you to have a special AMP version of things like blog posts, which are basically more speed optimized, but, but have fewer features. So it's kind of a restricted, but even faster way to build pages. And we have AMP features, you can click on this link to learn more about it and decide whether you want to activate this on your site or not. Okay, there's one more kind of basic structural step that we need to do before we go into further details. Let's talk about menus. We can go to appearance and menus right here because 
In the wizard, as you remember, we skipped that step. And what WordPress does is it generates a menu automatically, which just has all your pages. And that's not great, obviously. So we're going to edit this. I'm going to call this main menu. And we'll change the label of the generated homepage. That's the, that's the homepage just Thrive Theme Builder generated for us. We'll change that to home. Then blog is good, about is good. Disclaimer doesn't belong here. Let's remove that. Lead gen page here. Let's also remove that. Privacy policy, let's remove that. Sample page, we don't want to remove that. Sales page, yes, why not? But let's change this to, you know, a call to action. Get my thing, buy now, at whatever. So I'm gonna call this again, Lightroom presets. Um, if we assume that's my product, let's just call it that. And then I'll click on create menu. So now I've got a menu called main menu with these four menu items. Let's create a second menu, create a new menu, menu name, footer menu. And here I'll click on create. Here we want basically disclaimer, privacy policy, and that's it. These two pages we want in here, we can rearrange them like this. Let's save that. And there we go, okay. So now we have these menus generated and with this we have all the basics on our website. So we have taken care of readability, clarity and structure with the menus as well. And readability and clarity, by the way, a lot of that is already baked into everything that you find in Thrive Theme Builder. So everything we do, especially when it comes to typography and readability, everything is already optimized to be as clear and readable as possible. And then the other aspect of clarity is gonna be your messaging, the actual words you use on the pages. Now let's move into the next level of conversion optimization, which is about calls to action and lead generation and things like that. Now to do that, let's go into the Thrive dashboard and set some things up here. Here, one of the most important things you can set up is you can go to API connections and you can connect your website to different email marketing services and other marketing services. So for example, if I go into add new connection, you can search for things by name or you can scroll through all the services we integrate with. And as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of them. So if I type in MailChimp, I can choose MailChimp and I can add my API key here and connect to the service. And this is all I need to do to now start connecting my opt-in forms on my website to my mailing lists in MailChimp. And the same goes for many other apps. So if you use a webinar app like Webinar Jam and you want to use forms on your site to sign people up to your webinar events, you can do that. And as you can see here, we have, we integrate with all kinds of marketing solutions. So that's a thing to do right away, whatever marketing tools you use, integrate with them on this page. Then let's go back to the Thrive dashboard. And another useful thing to do is to go into analytics and scripts. We wanna manage our scripts right here. So here we can add things like tracking scripts, analytics scripts, and so on. For example, Google Analytics tells us that we should add the script. They give us a tracking script and they say that we should add this script to the before the head, before the end of the head section. As you can see, as soon as I paste this script in here, it recognizes this is Google Analytics. It knows where to put it. And I can say, I wanna insert this in Thrive Themes and in landing pages. I click on continue and that adds my script here. And similarly, you can add any script you want. So that can be tracking scripts like Hotjar, it can be Facebook pixels, anything like that that you need. You can add them here. If a script isn't automatically recognized, you can just use manual settings. And one of the great advantages of using this is that at any point, you can also just turn them on and off. So if you have a certain script that you maybe wanna to use to do heat maps, you can turn it on for a while but you don't have to have that running all the time. So you can just come in here and flip it off. And the great thing about that is that you don't have to then, you know, delete the script and the next time you want to create a heat map, you have to come back and you have to find the script again and paste it again and so on. You just flip a switch on and off. And then one final thing in the Thrive dashboard is let's go to smart site where here we can have some central settings that can be useful all across the website. For example, for your company, you can, you can set your company name, address, and so on. You can automatically fill those in in certain places if you need to. You can link to your privacy and other legal pages, and you can set your social links. So for example, just to show how this works, I can go YouTube, 
that will be the link text and then the link to the channel save that and now the the great advantage of this is that whenever i want to link to my youtube channel or my social account or whatever it is i can use the dynamic link feature to do that and in the future if at any point that link changes if i change the url of my youtube channel or something like that instead of having to go down hunt down every single link on my website i just come here change it here and we're done so that is the purpose of the global fields settings here in the smart site settings. Now with that, that is basically, as you can see, there's more that, that we can do here. There's, there's more powerful features to choose from here, but those are the basics. With that, let's go back into Thrive Theme Builder. As you can see, there's more that, that we can do here. There's, there's more powerful features to choose from here, but those are the basics. With that, let's go back into Thrive Theme Builder and start making some more detailed edits to our website. So, so far we have all the basics. Now let's look at how you can tweak more this in a more granular way. So this is everything that we've already set up in the wizard as we went through. And let's go and look at how to edit templates. So here we can see these labels. It says this is the home page, this is a default post, video post, audio post. We have an error 404 page, default page, and then archives. So let's go into the default post. Let's click on this. I'll just click on edit and this will open up in the Thrive Theme Builder editor. Here's what the default blog post looks like right now. And this is a drag and drop editor where you can basically change and edit anything you want. And we've tried to make this as intuitive as possible. So the rule that we use for editing is what we call click to edit. So if you see this image here and you want to change something about it, you can click on it and then you'll see a range of options for this. So I can change the size of this and I can do all kinds of things. I can change where it links to. I can also just delete it if I don't want it. That's the basic idea. I just click on something and I see the options I have and you always have extensive options for whatever you want to change about anything you see. So let's say these sharing buttons here, maybe I don't like these, you can just get rid of them. And I can also add new elements. So you can add anything to the page that you want, including dynamic elements. For example, what we have up here is the post title. This will be filled out with whatever the current posts title is. And if I don't want it up here, I can get rid of it here. And if I want it somewhere else, I can grab the post title element and I can bring that in wherever I want. Now it was definitely better before, so I'll put it back up here. And what we can also see is this will dynamically change. So I can choose my content here. I can say, I want the, I want some other post content to preview my layout. And this will switch to a different post and show me what this looks like. This also means we can change things like the sidebar. We can also change the proportions between the sidebar and the post content by just clicking and dragging. And here's another element of calls to action. So in the sidebar here, we have an example call to action where we can just change the text and we can change where this button links to. And this is one of the ways in which instead of just having people consume our content, we can think about, well, how do we want to let people know about offers that we have about our mailing list, about coaching calls, whatever it is. And the sidebar of a blog post be, would be one of those places where you can decide here, I'm going to make sure that everyone who reads one of my blog posts will see a call to action that leads them towards my conversion goal. Now, an important thing to understand here is that what we see here in this box here, this is the post content and this is dynamic. So this will be for the specific post I'm looking at, this is the text that will, or the text and content and images and so on that will appear here. What's important to realize is that everything I edit here on the template level, this is the post template, this will appear on all my blog posts. So for example, if I say, you know what, I don't want this call to action here in the sidebar, I can delete it, but I haven't just deleted it on this specific post with this title. I've deleted it on all posts. So if I change to a different post here, you can see that it loads different content, it loads a different title, different featured image and so on, but the call to action thing is still missing. So that's something to be aware of as we do the editing here, we are changing a template that affects many pages. We also have some global elements such as the header. 
and the footer. And we can also edit these and get them to look different across our whole website. So if I click on edit section right here, the changes I make to the header now are going to affect everywhere where, they had, where this header is showing, which is currently everywhere on my website. Now, what I want to do is the menu here, I want to change this menu. So if I click into a menu item, again, we have the breadcrumbs that help us navigate through elements. We can see that this menu item is part of the custom menu element that we have here. And I want to change the menu source because right now this isn't the real menu. So since we have now created a menu in the last step, I can change this to my main menu. And now it goes home, blog, about, and Lightroom presets. Now this is great. I can, I can change the templates as well. So I can change the, the entire template of this menu here. And we have various templates to choose from. And of course, you can also always click on something. So let's say I want to click on this here. I can go to something like borders and corners. Maybe I want this to have rounded corners. So I can click and drag here to change the, the button corners, the rounding. So I can make it a pill shape button or a square button. I can change whatever I want here. But the important thing is, and what I would recommend you do is that in your menu, keep it simple. We, want, we don't want to have an overloaded menu with tons of things. We want to make it easy for people to make a choice. And so few menu items is one way to do that. And also highlighting a menu item is again, a conversion focused thing to do. So instead of just saying, hey, here are four equal options, I say, this one is important, check out my product, right? I wanna drive people towards my conversion goal. So with that update done, I'm gonna click on done and that will update the header with the new menu across my whole website. And we can do the same with the footer. So let's just edit the section again. And when you have this orange frame here that tells you that you're editing something that will have an effect on more than, in more than one place, um, or you're editing like a, a global element. And right now I can't edit anything outside of it, right? I'm basically in footer editing mode and that's it. So we go into custom menu again, main options, menu source, footer menu. Now we change that and save that. There we go. Let's look at another important conversion element that will be on our website, which is what we call the bottom section. And right here, you can always see this overview over kind of the, the basic structure of a page, right? We have a header, we have a top section, we have the content and sidebar, we have the bottom section, and we can also edit right from here. So if I click on the sidebar, I can untoggle the visibility and I can have a full width blog post. But again, this affects all blog posts that use this template. So always be careful about changes like that that you make. And the same is for the bottom section. So I can say, hey, I don't need the bottom section. Let's just get rid of it, no problem. But we can also bring it back. So here you can see this eye here, you can click on that. And that brings the bottom section back. And I can choose different templates here. So if I click on replace here, this brings me a gallery of bottom sections I can choose from. And as you can see, we have bottom sections for different purposes. For example, we have ones that link to other posts where the main goal is, okay, you've read this article, go read another one. We have ones that are with a contact form where we want people to contact us. We have ones that have an opt-in form and ones that advertise an offer. So we can use all kinds of different calls to action and all kinds of different ways of trying to drive people towards a conversion goal here. I'm going to choose a very simple opt-in form here. And because I want to demonstrate how to actually get people on your mailing list. So let's say someone comes to this blog post, they read all the way down here. We write something that convinces them to get on our mailing list. You know, maybe we say, get my free report, whatever by signing up. And then we have the lead generation element. And here's how we connect this to our mailing list. When I click on the lead generation element, you can see that there's the option here add connection. And from here I can choose what I've integrated with, in this case, MailChimp. So I choose MailChimp and then it gives me a couple of options that are taken from my MailChimp account. So I can choose which mailing list to add someone to. And I can also add things like groups and choose whether it's single or double opt-in. I can add tags. So let's add tag one like this and apply. So I can basically choose what exactly happens when someone signs up on this form. I can also change the form fields and add form fields. I can add hidden fields and we have other tutorials that show you all the advanced lead generation features. 
For now, one more thing that's important is we can choose to either send people to a URL. So when they've signed up, we send them to another page that says, thank you, here's your report. Or we can choose to show a success notification. So I can just keep people on the same page and I can say, you've been successfully signed up, check your inbox. Okay, and I can preview that here. This is what it looks like when someone signs up. There we go. But again, here we're, we're taking something that can often be quite complicated and we're making it as easy as possible. Right? We're taking the idea of how do I get an opt-in form onto my website that looks good, that matches the design of my website and that you know tags people correctly and so on. All this can usually be so complicated and we've made it as easy as possible for you to get this important conversion element onto your website. So let's leave it at that for now. I'll save my work here. This is my default post. And then of course we can do the exact same thing for all the other layouts. The other thing I wanna show here is the list templates. So you basically have two list templates. One is the blog page and another is any kind of category page, a tag page, anything like that. Even a search results page will have a certain look where it lists multiple posts. So that is the blog page and the default archive is categories, search results, and so on. And here's an important thing to note how to edit. So if we go into our archive page, for example, here's what that looks like. And as you can see, we have a search bar at the top and we have a list of posts here. And like with everything, you can always edit something by clicking on it. So you wanna edit the search bar, you wanna edit what it looks like, what it searches, how big it is, and so on. You can do all of that here. And with the post list, so a list of posts, that is actually a, a super powerful element that we have in Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect. And you can change a lot about what exactly this looks like. First of all, we can go in here and we can go to the template. And again, we have a gallery of a huge number of templates here to choose from. So right away, we can make all kinds of changes and we can do something like this. Let's, let's, let's choose this one here. It's like a simple post layout. So we can take this and even here, I can go into edit design and I can make further changes. So if I wanna bring back the featured image, I can bring that in here. I can say, okay, let's add a featured image here and that will dynamically add the featured image to each one. Uh, I can choose this text here I'll go to text in the breadcrumbs. I can make this larger. I can go to layout and position and change the alignment of everything. So everything you see, again, everything you see is fully editable and you can make this page look any way you want. So another thing you can do, one more thing I wanna show that we haven't really looked at is you can also use dynamic images as backgrounds. So if this is too big for me, I can go in here and I can go to, I'm gonna search for a content box. Let me insert a content box here. And I can give this a certain height and in background style for the box, I can go to image and I can say, I want this to be the featured image of the post, all right? And I can even choose the alignment of this. So maybe I wanna see like the top left or the middle or the bottom of that image, change that and apply this and now I have a way to show my featured image, but I can choose how tall this is so I can make it use up less space. So as you can see, it's quite difficult for me to actually even give you a good overview of all the things you can do here because there's so much to cover and I don't want this video to go on for hours and hours. But I think you get the idea. By going into our templates here and by clicking on edit and by just basically clicking around and looking at the options, you can see how you can usually find new templates to choose and you can basically edit every single detail of every template and every page on your website with drag and drop simplicity. So with that, let's go to the final component of a conversion optimized website, which is to have specific conversion pages. And we're actually gonna start with the home page. Let's go to the final component of a conversion optimized website, which is to have specific conversion pages. And we're actually gonna start with the home page. 
a home page like I mentioned before let's click on edit here like I mentioned before the home page think of your home page as an important conversion page on your website now when I'm editing a page like this and this is important to realize now I'm editing the content of this page so the home page is a landing page and we can also see up here this is the thrive architect symbol thrive architect is there to edit the content of a page and Thrive Theme Builder is there to edit everything around the content. Okay, so everything we've looked at before, header, footer, sidebar, bottom section, top section, all this stuff, this is what's around the content of a page or post. But now on the home page, we're editing the actual content of this individual unique page. That is Thrive Architect. And that gives us similar options to edit anything we see. But here I'm only editing this one individual page. What's already happened here is that we have the header with the changes we made, the footer with the changes we made, which is not surprising, right? Because as we were editing this, we knew this is going to affect the entire site. So this is a homepage layout that we can use to, to make a really nice kind of neat, short and conversion focused homepage. Obviously I changed this. In this case, it doesn't even need to be like a, a personal branding thing. So I can choose an image like this here. And put that in and I can maybe change the size of this a bit I can also go into borders and corners maybe round this off a bit and then I would here want to write about okay what's my website about so I could say something like learn how to create kick-ass pictures using cheap camera gear and then maybe I want to Give this a bit more space for the text here. But as you can see, it's all just like drag and drop. I also want to go into my columns here and maybe center align this. And then let's see, there's basically too much space here somewhere. This here is too much. Let's get rid of that. And let's go into this page section. Let's add a bit of a bottom padding here. There we go. So that could be my basic setup. Here we have an email opt-in form. That's a good idea to have. Let's connect this to our MailChimp again. And again, I'm not going to go through this again. You already know how this works. So I connect this form. There's another form here. I'd also connect this to my MailChimp. Here we have another author image. I could replace that with an image of me like this one. Another powerful thing we can do here is we can actually extend this page with what we call page blocks. So in between the sections of the page, you can see this plus icon appearing and it says plus page block. When I click on this, it gives me a whole gallery of elements that I can choose to insert for sales pages, landing pages, home pages, and so on. And it's also easy to navigate through these. So as you can see, maybe I have a product highlight section uh, where I want to get people to buy my ebook. So how about this one? I insert this and it gives me this pre-designed section plus it uses my brand colors automatically and then the rest of this job is really just I go in and I click and I change the text right I change the text to match my brand my product here we have a post list we've already seen that I can choose if I want to show different posts here I can go into filter posts I can say you know what instead of showing just the latest posts I want to create a rule and I want to create a rule that says I want to only show posts that are in a specific category such as uh, photography tutorials save and close and then it will show the latest posts from this category and it does that automatically so I have dynamically updated post lists on my home page and again with the so you know maybe I don't like this section here so I can get rid of it and I can click on the plus here and I can simply insert a different section that I think is more fitting for my business so again whatever that is you can very rapidly customize exactly what you want to see on your home page using these features for now let's leave it at that and save our work here the important thing on the home page is again Communicate clearly what your website is about. So we're using text and a picture to say, here's what this is about. And call people to action and give people an easy way to navigate to the important parts of your website. So this here is a bit of a mess here, but the idea would be, hey, 
check out these posts. These are the important posts and check out my ebook, right? This kind of thing makes for a conversion focused homepage. Next, let's build a sales page. Next, let's build a sales page. So we already have the page, right? If we go into our pages here, we have currently a empty sales page. If I go here and I click on edit with Thrive Architect, it will load up Thrive Architect and I can start building this page. Now I've got good news and bad news. Bad news is if you wanna sell your product, you need a great sales page. And it's really difficult to make a good sales page. The good news is we've also solved this problem for you. One of the ways in which you can do this is if you load up this page here and you click on this cloud icon, you can choose a template. And I'm using the shape shift theme. And as you'll see, I can get a couple of pre-made pages here. And I can also use a blank page and I can even use all of these other pages. <laughs> so all of these other page templates. So I can either create a sales page that uses the exact same design language and style and so on from the rest of my website, or I can even say, hey, I wanna have a different kind of template for my sales page. And we have all kinds of templates to choose from. And we have all the features you've already seen on these templates as well. So if I click on this one here, for example, we have a sales page example here. So let's choose that. And right here, First of all, I can go into this tab here and let's change the accent color to our theme color. So right away, the entire sales page is updated to match our theme color. And this sales page here, there's two things. First of all, this is a tutorialized sales page. So the sales page itself will explain what you should write where and how you should use these different sections, kind of the do's and don'ts of, you know, how to write testimonials how to structure your sales page, where to put what. So it's almost like a fill in the blank, go through this to create an awesome sales page. And it also has the page blocks feature. So if you go through this and you think, okay, this is good, but I want a different way to show my product, you click on plus, and you'll have all these different page blocks to choose from, which also follow the same idea that if I insert anything here, this automatically takes on the font and brand color settings and so on, for the rest of the page. And so very rapidly you can mix and match an effective sales page. And of course, you can simply follow the template and it will tell you, put this here, right? Fill in testimonial here, do an about the author section here and so on. This is all, this is not arbitrary. This is based on our experience of how to make a high converting sales page. So this is the easiest way to get a high converting sales page for your product. And then one more page that is a must have on any conversion focused website is a lead generation page. So again, we have an empty page here and the lead generation page is simply a page that is there to advertise your newsletter or to advertise a free product that people get in return for signing up to your newsletter. And again, you can use all these features that we looked at to very quickly make an effective lead generation page. So if we use our theme templates here, I can choose a blank page. I can also choose a pre-made, already conversion optimized um, lead generation page template, of course. Or I can choose this blank page, which actually in this case shows the header and footer. I don't wanna show the header, because this is a fully conversion optimized page. I don't want navigation on here. Just have the message that tells people, get on my mailing list. So we would have probably some kind of a hero area that explains Here's why you need to get on my mailing list. So perhaps this one here, this looks nice and simple. Here I can change this image to something that represents my free guide or something like that. And then we already have this background section that has like an arrow pointing down. So maybe we can add a second section here with a lead generation element that looks maybe something like this. And let's click in this. I think the background should just be white. And then since the arrow kind of this, this subtle background arrow seems to point the wrong way now, and what we can do here is we can go to this section and we have what's called decorations and we can choose a different decoration. So we can choose what that, what that bottom looks like. 
And as you can see, we have many shapes to choose from and we could go with this one here. And we can also change the height of this. So now this kind of more naturally points towards our email form. And again, I'd connect this with MailChimp and then we're good to go. We save this, we have got a functional and nice looking lead generation page on our website. All right, so that's a as quick as possible tour to help you get from zero to a functioning conversion optimized website. As you can see, these tools, Thrive Theme Builder and Thrive Architect are massively powerful and it's quite difficult for me to give a tutorial where I'm even just scratching the surface of what you can do without it going on for too long. But here's the thing, don't be intimidated by all the things that can be done with these tools. As you can see, we've made this as easy as possible to get started. And I highly encourage that you start simple. Right? Don't worry too much about all the little details starting out. Walk through the wizard and you'll be amazed at how great your website already looks just by the end of that. And then one by one, you can start building out these pages. You can make your home page, you can make your lead generation page, your sales page, your about page, and so on. And take it step by step and as your website grows and as your business grows, you will encounter new needs. You will see like, oh, can I also do this? Can I also do that? And more often than not, you'll find that the answer is yes, indeed, you can do this with Thrive Architect, with Thrive Theme Builder, or with one of the other plugins in the Thrive Themes suite. So don't be afraid of, of overwhelm. You don't have to do everything all at once. Get started, we've made this as easy as possible and enjoy the process of building out your website and making it better and better over time. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you'll build something truly awesome with our tools.